Hello, how are you today? I am excited and thrilled to share with you the seventh spiritual law of success from Deepak Chopra's book, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, and how you can embody it, integrate it, experience it at the canvas. So I am coming to you here live from my hallway because I have been painting a big snake on my hallway office door. And I'm going to connect that back to the law of Dharma. So um, let me read from the book first and then share how you can integrate the law of Dharma into your life through your painting practice. Okay, so in the very beginning of the chapter, it says, everyone has a purpose in life, a unique gift or special talent to give to others. And when we blend this unique talent with service to others, we experience the ecstasy and exaltation of our own spirit, which is the ultimate goal of all goals. God, I have to say, reading that, I got so grateful for how I get to spend my time and um, what I do to generate um, magnetized money energy to pay my bills and everything and sharing the sacred painting practice with you, training my creatively fit coaches, supporting them, um, so many ways to do it. Um, and the hallway, so the hallway, the snake, which I'm just completely in love with, my symbol for 2020, reminded me of something and this can be a way to kind of go back like I remember reading that you are your truest self at age eight so if you think back to when you were eight I actually had art centers in the basement of my house both houses I grew up in had basements I was in Chicago and like underneath you know the stairs going down there was this empty space and my mom and I painted it all one color the first one was yellow the second one was red and then we stenciled art center on the little part of the wall between the stairs and the space. And um, so that's pretty funny. And I remember being, I was 10, I remember being at Disneyland in California and doing the like boat thing through the jungle, like Briar Bear or something. And I was just like, why aren't our houses like this? Like, why don't we create these like imaginative, whimsical spaces in our homes? Why are homes not like Disneyland? <laughs> So I wouldn't say my house is achieving Disneyland um, stature, but I am having a lot of fun um, using space creatively. And this blank door, I've got lots of blank doors. I'm looking at four others, so get ready. Um, so this is a way that I get to uniquely express myself that's been with me since I was a kid, right? So at the canvas is one of the best places we can practice doing whatever we want, painting whatever we want, and then witnessing where are you telling yourself that you need to paint a certain way or paint like her or him, right? So what the law of Dharma is saying is that you have a unique gift to share with the world, a unique energy, a unique vibration that only you can share. There's no need to have two yous. There are infinite expressions and you are meant to do it your way, not like I do it or anybody else that you see does it, you. And then we have this belief that, you know, the canvas is like product, right? That the only reason to paint is if you could show it to people or hang it on the wall and you would get praise or someone might offer to buy it. Um, if you can't create something that people wouldn't buy, you shouldn't even bother. Bullshit. I call bullshit. <laughs> Painting at the canvas is one of the places where you can experience and create for yourself and bathe yourself in the energy of pure freedom. You can truly do whatever you want at the canvas. And as you practice, as you engage in that energy of doing it your way, you start attracting, tuning in to other elements of your life and ways you want to do it your way, right? Okay, let me get back to this um, part of the chapter because this is good and we'll circle it all together. Um, so he says there are three components to the law of Dharma. The first one is um, each of us is here to discover our true self. And all of my coaches and any of you in Super Soul Flow know I love it when he says we are not human beings that have occasional spiritual experiences. It's the other way around. We're spiritual beings that have occasional human experiences. So connecting to you as 
divine. I loved, um, someone explained once to me that if um, the divine was a loaf of bread, we're like slices of that bread, okay? So at the canvas, what do we do? We are creating worlds and realities at the canvas. What better place to connect to your true self? So then the second component of the law of Dharma is to express our unique talents. Everyone has a unique talent. That's where I want you to practice painting your way and and recognizing when you start painting where you start comparing judging being critical and how that's based on your comparison to how other people paint and then bringing yourself back to the law of dharma and like right i am meant to create my love life uniquely my way and i can start right here at the canvas okay and then the third component is service to humanity there's so many ways we can do that at the canvas. When any one of us raises our vibration, we create a change, a shift in the vibration of everything around us. When any one of us takes back our true creative power, for me, the canvas just makes visible how we are creating our reality in each and every moment. We are the sole creators of our experience. We create our reality by how we interpret events that happen, how we process, how we translate, how we um, muse on what's going on. And we're meant to live life from the inside out, creating our reality, choosing the energy we want to radiate and bathe ourselves in from the inside out, not waiting on external circumstances to create the opportune uh, landscape for us to feel abundant or loved or in our power. We want to create that from within. So then we can be of service to others. So when any of us do that, it helps everybody. You can paint a painting, you can paint a big heart, you can paint love, you can paint yes and share it on social media and end up sharing it with thousands of people. And you can paint a big smiley face and share it with people. It's gonna make people smile. And as you do that, Ask for insight. What can I do now to be more of service to humanity? And as you paint, because you are raising your vibration, you are raising your level of consciousness, you are accessing higher wisdom, you are connecting to your higher self, and you are going to receive insight into whatever it is you ask. You can go to the canvas, go to 10 or 20 minutes of painting time with an intention to um, attract the wisdom you need to help you in any situation. So I recommend buying this book, hello, and getting to the canvas, going out and buying canvas and paints. Um, if you need any help at all, you can comment below, reach out to me, go to WhitneyFreya.com, send me a message. You can join my Life Artist Masterclass for free. And if you have an idea that your dharma includes helping other people to develop a personal painting practice, right? turning other people on, lighting up the possibilities for them. Um, you want to explore my Creatively Fit coaching training um, that you can find out more information at WhitneyFreya.com. Okay, that's it. Our seven spiritual laws of success series. And thank you for following along. Um, it'll be easy to find one through six. And I'm us using hashtag painting spiritual laws. Awesome. Thanks for joining me. Mwah. Bye. Okay. I wanted to say hi to everybody. Um, you know, I'm trying to do these to reuse and share the goodness. Hi, Corey. Hi, Nikki and Sherry. Hey, Sherry. How are you? Christine. Christine, I remember in 2001, the first house I bought myself without a husband, I painted NA pictographs on my dining room wall. Everyone thought it was a bit crazy, but I loved it. It made me happy. Happy New Year. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I did think about that as I was doing this. Um, I'm, and I'm sharing the process on my stories, Facebook and Instagram stories. And, um, and I am, hey, Brenda, and I'm time lapsing it just for fun. Um, I thought it would be a fun project. So I'm digging it. I'm so digging this snake. Yeah. It's a good thing. This is my office, you guys. It's funny. It's a, it's a closet. I think it's supposed to be a linen closet, but it's got my printer and all my stuff, and I love it because uh, then I don't have to have this stuff out. Oh, Native American. Thank you, Christine. 
Okay, everyone. Well, happy Freya Friday to you. Um, I sent you all an email with some fun information about how to open up to receive your 2020 symbol. I have completed my owl snake painting that I've been working on, and there's an image of that in there. And um, so check your, like, different folders if you don't see it right in your main inbox. But I love sharing inspirational, positive, fun things for you to muse on for your weekend. And you know, Friday, the origin of the word Friday is Freya's day. So that's why it is, thank goddess, it's Freya Friday. Mwah. Bye everyone.